Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to go over a real life uh, algebraic example calculating own price elasticity of demand. So if you watched last week's video, you'll know that we talked about four different types of elasticity. This is the first one and the most common that you're going to be asked in a micro or macroeconomics test or assignment. With that said, let's get into things. In any question that asks you to calculate own price elasticity, you're going to be presented with two different prices and two different quantities demanded. And there's going to be a shift from one of those points to another. So here I've made it crystal clear on the side, we have our initial or our old P and Q D, so price and quantity demanded. And then we've got our new price and our new quantity demanded. And we want to see how elastic this consumer is as we go from the initial price or the old price to the new price. So the first thing we can look at is, well, as price increases from $2 to $3, obviously quantity demanded will decrease. We know this because the law of demand says that as price increases, quantity demanded will decrease. So now we're going to actually calculate the algebra behind this. So recall from last week, own price elasticity is equal to the percentage change in Q over the percentage change in the determinant. And in this case, the determinant is P. But do you know how to calculate percentage change? That's what we're going to go over today so that no matter what this example looks like, you can plug in any numbers and be able to do this yourself. So percentage change, this is how I taught my students percentage change. You take new minus old, that goes in brackets, so you do this first, divided by old times 100. And that's percentage change. But we're looking for the percentage change in quantity and the percentage change in price. So what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have the new QD minus the old QD over the old QD times 100, and then we're going to have on the denominator, we're going to have the new P minus the old P. So again, here I've got old as the initial P, so the price, the original price, all over the old P times 100. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is that these times 100s are going to cancel out. So I'm actually gonna cancel them out. I don't need to do them. Well, now I just need to sub in my values. So the first thing I need is new quantity demanded, which is right here, so new, quantity demanded is three. So let me open my brackets. I'm going to have three minus the old quantity demanded, which is right here, which is five, divided by the old quantity demanded, which is still five. Now I don't need to do my times 100. Now let's do the denominator. So my new P is three. It's right here. And I have my old P, which is two. And then it's going to be divided by my old P, which is two. So again, new minus old over old is how you would remember this. Well, now this is a simple algebra equation that any of us could solve. So three minus five is negative two over five. And all of this is three minus one is one over two. So now I have the division of two fractions. We know how to do that. Um, it's simply multiplying by the reciprocal so let me remind you how to do this if you don't have a calculator. Um, the alternative is you could also just put this into uh, decimals and plug it into a calculator. You're more than welcome to do that. This top one is negative 0.4, the bottom one is 0.5, and then you would just do negative 0.4 over 0.5. Um, but we're going to explore with just fractions. Uh, it'll give us the exact same answer in the end. So uh, we to divide fractions by each other, we're going to multiply the reciprocal. So we're gonna write the first one. So I have negative two over five, but instead of doing division, I'm going to multiply. And if I'm doing multiplication, then I need to flip this other one. So this is one over two. I want the reciprocal, which is two over one. And now I just multiply straight across the top and bottom. So now I have negative two times two is negative four, and five times one is five. So my answer is going to be negative four over five, which is actually 0 0.8. So let me bring it down here, which is equal to 0 0.8. Now you might be saying, okay, but where did the negative sign go? Well, we talked about this last week. The own price elasticity of demand will always be negative. It'll be negative because as P goes up, QD goes down. And as QD goes up, then P goes down. They are inversely related. And this is always going to be the case. 
So when we talk about own price elasticity of demand, we are talking about it in absolute value. Now, something that we're going to make a video on in the future is how to determine if this is elastic or inelastic. And long story short, if the coefficient of elasticity, which is in this case 0.8, if it is greater than one, then you would say that that, that coefficient is elastic. If it is less than one, then you would call it inelastic. So in this case, with a coefficient of 0.8, we would say that the consumer is inelastic to a price change. But notice how important it is to be writing the new and old quantity demanded correctly. What I'm going to show you is what would happen if we were going from this point, P equals $3 and quantity demanded equals three to P equals $2 and QD equals five. So what if this was the old and this was the new? That's what we're going to explore because it actually will give you a different answer so you need to make sure that you're plugging in these numbers in this fraction or in this equation, you're plugging them in properly. So let's go to this next example where I flip the two old and new price and quantities. And just like that, we've switched them. So now the initial or the old price and quantity are $3 and three units and the new are $2 and five units. So now we see a price go down and a quantity demanded go up. These are the same numbers but obviously our elasticity, the way we input them into the equation are going to be different. So again, the formula, we'll put it up on the top, is percentage change in Q divided by percentage change in P. But now new minus old over old will be flipped. So we have new QD minus old QD obviously this is in brackets, over old QD. I'm not going to write times 100 because we just discovered that those times 100s will cancel out because any number on the top and the bottom of a fraction will cancel each other out if they're the exact same. So I will also write the bottom, which again, the determinant in this case is price. So new P minus old P over old P. And now all I need to do is take these numbers and sub them into the equation. So remember our other elasticity from the previous example was 0.8. Now we're going to find out that this elasticity, when these two are switched, is going to be different. So again, be very careful when you're answering this question to know which one is the old P and Q and which one is the new P and Q and to sub them into this equation properly. So now we're going to look at the new quantity demanded, which is five right here. And I have five minus the old QD, which is three. So five minus three over the old QD, which is three. And this is all over new P, which is two right here. Minus old P, which is right there is three over old P, which is three. So now I've got all these numbers here um, let's see what happens. I have five minus three equals two over three. And then I have two minus three is negative one over three. Whoop, negative one over three. Now, again, I need to uh, divide these two fractions by one another. So I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal. So two thirds times negative three over one or uh, three over negative one, it doesn't matter. So again, uh, I'm gonna multiply the tops across. So two times negative three is equal to negative six. Three times one is three. So this is obviously equal to negative two. Again, we are going to use absolute value. So we would say in this case, elasticity is equal to two. Absolute value, so the negative sign disappears because this own price elasticity of demand will always be negative. So I have an elasticity of two. Is that inelastic or elastic? Well, it's uh, pretty safe to say that two is greater than one. Therefore, the own price elasticity uh, coefficient is elastic. So again, these are using the exact same numbers, but flipped. So the old became the new and the new became the old. So what this is telling you is that right here, the uh, elasticity uh, coefficient equaling two and the elasticity coefficient equaling 0.8 is very different. 
yet the same numbers are used. So when you're on a test scenario, make sure you are crystal clear understanding what the initial price and quantity is and what the new price and quantity are. After that, it's simply remembering this equation right here, new minus old over old over new minus old over old. And again, in this case, the determinant is price, but because it is own price elasticity of demand, but if the determinant was income, the same thing would apply. And that's a video that we can make in the future if you want to learn more about the income elasticity of demand. Well, we hope you found this useful. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and comment what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next. Thank you.